Welcome back to the second video in this mini-series on what type of pens should you get if you were only allowed to have an X number of pens. And this is the second video, so we're going to talk about what pens should you get if you were allowed to have two pens. And this is really going to be a quite a brief video. In fact, I'm not even bothering to make a video. I'm just talking over a picture that's maybe lazy. And the reason for that is the decision is very simple. And and what that is, is that on top of a sauté pen, which is uh, the pen that you should have if you were only allowed to have one pen, as discussed in the first video, on top of that, you simply add a pot of a reasonable size. So in the first video, we said that, okay, with a sauté pen, you can do at least 80% of what an average person might want to do in their average day-to-day uh, -day cooking. And a, a pot like this, is not going to add too much more to that. Um, you know, it, 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 it does allow you to make a batch of vegetable stock, a big batch of stock, a big batch of something with liquid. But what it does add, the value that it does add, is just that it gives you the flexibility to make two things at the same time. Um, you could have something, a stew, uh, stir fry, steaks, going in the saute pan, and something with liquid going in the pot. Okay, so without um, much further ado, let's uh, let's move on to the PowerPoint section uh, as usual, and I'm going to show you exactly what you can do in a with a combination rather with a combination of a saute pan and the pot. So let's go. Okay, so we're back on this familiar looking slide as you may have seen in the first video. Now, as I said in the first video, everything here you can do in a sauté pan, okay, everything. Um, but there are a few items on this list that are slightly more suited uh, with a pot, okay, with a taller, taller pot. Uh, so let's go through those items now, okay. So start again, starting from the top, going counterclockwise, um, sauté, shallow frying, uh, definitely a sauté pan. Uh, if you're going to do deep frying, a pot is maybe a little bit more suitable. If you're going to boil something rice pasta, um, you would ideally use a pot um, for, for the shape, because of the shape, rather. Uh, not that a saute pan cannot do it, it's just that, you know, typically you would use a pot for something like that. Searing meat, browning meat, saute pan, braise. Uh, first choice is definitely the saute pan. Um, and, you know, braise on the stop top, finish in, in the oven. Um, but if push came to shove, a, a, a pot, a stainless steel pot would do the job. Uh, steaming, steaming, uh, you would, uh, the, your first choice would be a pot. Um, but you, you could also get away with it in a saute pan. Baking, uh, well, definitely a saute pan. Roasting, saute pan once again. And slow cooking. Uh, well, you can do this in either. You know, slow cooking is kind of the same as braising. Um, in fact, it is often the second step after you, uh, after the, browning of the meat and then you slow cook it in the oven or on the stove and that can be that can be done in a saute pan or pot um, again my my personal preference and i think the preference for most people would be um, would be a saute pan so as you can hear the pot is not adding uh you know new methods of cooking that you were not able to do in a saute pan but it just does give you that flexibility of being able to do two things at the same time and um, if we move on to the next slide um, which is kind of redundant here actually because it's the idea is obvious that you know stir fries steaks juice uh, paellas roasted chicken risotto fried rice soup you know you can you can just a pot will just simply allow you to do two things at the same time you know in combination with a saute pan so what should you look for in a saute pan? I spoke about this before, um, you know, look for something with a heavy weight, thick bottom to retain the heat. Uh, make sure that it comes with the lid. Uh, in, in most cases it will. Make sure the material is oven safe. Uh, and try to, st to stay away from the Teflon, um, again, because uh, safety concerns, temperature concerns, it's mostly, most likely not going to be oven safe. And, um, and Teflon will always wear out, okay? So six months, a year, two years, I don't know, but it will happen. Whereas a stainless steel cast iron is not gonna wear out. And try not to get one that's too, too small. Okay? I think 24 should be, 24 centimeters should be the minimum that uh, you should look for. 
And uh, what should you look for in the pot? Well, it's kind of the similar principle. Make sure you get one with a thick bottom. Uh, I think the one piece of advice here is that just don't buy the cheapest. Okay, don't buy the cheapest. I go to the local, you know, lo local store um, you know, that sells homeware, the cheapest store, and I see the pans for two euros. And I can't believe that they even sell them because the sides of the pan, or rather the bottom of the pan, is just as thin as the side of the pan. And I'm thinking, you know, that pan is not going to last you for more than two days. So why bother selling it in the first place? So please don't be one of those people that buys one of those pans. Um, you know, try to go for something that's stainless steel. You don't have to get an expensive one. Just get one with a solid construction. And if you're only going to have one pan in terms of the capacity, uh, I recommend around five liters. So that's not too big, not too small. If it's too small, it's going to be restricting on what you can do. If it's too big, then in most cases, it's going to be a bit redundant. Okay, so that's anything above six, seven, eight liters. So five liters is for me a good, um, good middle of the range capacity. So that's the end of that um, little uh, presentation on what you should get if you only can have two pots. Uh, and I look forward to doing the next video on what you should get if you can have three pots and or three pans rather. And that's where it gets a little bit interesting because then it really um, you really get a bit more freedom on on what you want to do rather than what you need to do. Okay, so that's moving away from the bare essential minimums, um, you know, slightly. So again, hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next uh, video.